so we're talking about how to experience the power of god and just to let you know in the fourth service we're going to have prophet Tommy, and we're just going to talk about how prophetic can carry every man how the prophetic ministry can carry every man so it's either you want to stream in or get your friends to attend and all of you watching online if this is blessing you you want to tag a friend share with somebody and say hey don't sleep just attend the service right now so all of you can literally share with somebody either you're in the physical center or you're online and someone says how do i attend the prayers the prayers are monday to friday 6 30 a.m online in the physical center in lecky center here all right so mark chapter 9 verse 17 and one of the multitude answered and said master i have brought unto thee my son which had a dumb spirit you know if you attended the prayers when i was when we we're talking about spiritual attack i said to you but i didn't have time to show you in the bible that you know in the bible the way god describes spirits god described demonic spirit by their what operation so you know in african context we have other things we've added to it but if you want to follow the bible the bible has never spoken about a marine spirit before he doesn't describe them by where they stay it describes them by what their operation so if a spirit makes someone dumb it calls it what a dumb spirit if the spirit kills people it calls it the angel of death or the spirit of death if the spirit is what makes people lie it calls it a lying spirit if the spirit is what makes people depressed it call it a melancholic spirit it describes it by its function so the bible says this and wheresoever it takes him so the spirit takes him he tears him and foment and gnashes with his teeth and pines the way and i speak to the disciples that they should cast him out and they could not now i want to see the frustration of something i'm not going into all of the sicknesses because today we won't talk about how to experience the power of god but there's something i want to see he says so the father said i spoke to your disciples you could see the frustration of the father he said they could not cast him out he answered and said oh faithless generation how long shall i be with you how long shall i suffer you let's jump to verse 20 and the bible says verse 20 and they had brought and when they had brought him to him to jesus the child to jesus he saw him and straight away the spirit tore him apart and he fell on the ground and followed for me and he asked his father how long is it ago since this came of him and the father said since he was a child so this means that this person wasn't no longer a child but this has happened since he was a child and this what jesus this what the man said and oftentimes it will cast him into the fire so it was not just dumb it was also violent and he would cast him to the water then this i'm going to he says but if you can do anything if you can do anything he said help us see when i read this story of course it's a story that would talk about the power of god but one of the things i want to see is the frustration of a father I, i'm even thinking how come the mother did not show up maybe the mothers were not were not allowed to maybe the mother was late it's the frustration of the father and i'm saying this because everybody feels a sense of frustration when you're not growing everybody everybody the father was frustrated this child should be able to speak by now but this child is dumb this child should have certain behaviors by now but the child does not have it he was really frustrated and this is what you must notice this is what you must notice just give me one minute quiet can you have me turn off that air conditioner thank you glory to god hallelujah so this is what you must notice this is what you must notice that the child was not growing appropriately and why i'm saying this to you is this fulfillment is connected to growth if you if anybody says i'm fulfilled the reason why they feel fulfilled is because they are growing so when you see a lot of christians that are not growing what will happen to them they will never feel fulfilled when you see christians that are not growing what you will notice is that they will never feel fulfilled why because spiritual growth leads to spiritual fulfillment and when you're not growing you will not feel fulfilled look at this man he couldn't just look at this child there no he couldn't take it that was too difficult let's look at hebrews chapter 6 i want to see what paul said paul expressed his frustration on the christians he says this glory to god hebrews chapter 6 
Oh, glory to God. I, I just want to get the scripture. Yeah. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 12. So this is what it says. It says, for the time when you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again. Paul was expressing his frustration. He said, all those Hebrew Christians, the time you have to be teachers, you need somebody else again to be teaching you. What was he saying? He said, by my estimation, you should have gone past where you were. He says, at the level you are in, we should not be struggling with praying for one hour. At the level we are in, we should not be struggling with serving. At the level you are in, we should not be struggling with the fundamental teaching of Christ. We should, you should be able to understand the things of the Bible. You should be able to understand spiritual things. He said, but I look at your journey and you are meant to be here, but you are still here. You are still asking kindergarten questions when you are right now meant to be in university. And unfortunately, that's how many Christians are. And when people, when people are not growing as Christians, you see it. You see it all the time. Look at the father that had a dumb child. See, when you're not growing as a Christian, you're not just a concern. You become a burden to other Christians. You become a huge burden. This father was carrying the child. He was carrying the child. It's only God that knows how many places the father has taken the child to. And the reason is that this child is not just able to grow. This child is not just able to grow. So, people say, I want to really experience the power of God. But the question I want to ask you is this. Do you have the depth that can help you experience the power of God? Do you have the depth that can carry the weight of glory? Do you have the depth that can carry it? It's one thing to have the power of God. It's one thing to have the depth that carries it. When you see superstructures, superstructures have extraordinary foundation. I know that you want to pray for people and see things change. I know you want to see things transform. I know you want to speak and see things happen i know you want that but do you have the required depth to carry those spiritual structures paul said paul said it's so difficult now when people are not growing spiritually when they have that sense of spiritual fulfillment you know how it shows i'll give you the first thing. number one when people feel this is what happened when people feel that they are, when people become spiritually unfulfilled and experiencing spiritual frustration the first thing that happens to them is this they feel as if god has neglected them oh my god who knows what i'm talking about if you know wave your hand say amen somebody they feel as if you, you will hear things like uh, you know you know i don't know why god is doing this to me i, I don't it, it's an explanation they begin to have that deep feeling that god has neglected them and, and the reason see this is the thing about god god does not change his position hallelujah god is where he was G bible says jesus the same yesterday today and forever you are the one that moved god did not move if you ever feel neglected by God, always remember, God never moved. You were the one that moved. The reason why you feel that neglect by God is because there is a way you should be growing. But you're not growing. Let me give you a good example. If I see, um, I want to give an example. If I see Pastor Lyos' daughter, she's going to run towards me and jump on me. And I will carry her. But if Pastor Lyo, this older man, sees me, runs towards me, and jump on me, just a man that's about 40 years old, jumps on me, I'm like, what's wrong with you? The reason why with growth, there are different experiences. Some of you still want God to relate with you the way he related to you when you were a spiritual child. God is saying, uh-uh, come up to that. Come up Tida, come up Tida. He said, come up Tida. He says, there's a way I relate with a child. There's a way I relate with an adult. What knows what I'm talking about today? So when people feel frustrated, you see them, they feel neglected. 
you see them they say things like oh the sermon did not bless me <laughs> listen to me listen to me i don't come in the whole service people are getting blessed by the sermon and it's not you that getting blessed this is what i tell people this is what i tell pastors when people say that i said when the pastor cooks a spiritual meal if 95 percent of the people say this was a good meal and five people said this is a bad meal the five percent have problems there's something wrong with your taste bud maybe you're spiritually sick because how do you come to a church people get so blessed people get so challenged people are turned down by the power of the holy spirit you see them there and the reason why you don't get blessed is because your heart already has a disposition that reduces the impact of god's word it's not the word itself it's the fact that your heart has a disposition all the people heard jesus christ but the pharisees and you see never responded to jesus's message because their heart was affected when people are spiritually frustrated what happens to them is that they say it doesn't bless you. the third thing is, is they undervalue testimonies and encounters when they when he's hearing testimony they're like let's keep that part when people are talking about the genuine experience of the spirit of god let's keep that part because to them it's something they used to have they don't have or it's something they wanted to have but they lost and now they don't want to be reminded of something they cannot have hey somebody say hallelujah uh, that's so weak somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah the fourth thing that happens when you see what i that is this they begin to find fault with church and with church leaders well they begin to find fault they begin to find fault this is wrong that is wrong that is wrong and you know what no church is perfect when satan wants to destroy you he begins to make you see those things so more you know why the more you see those things the more you can't be blessed And the last thing when you see people are finished for frustrated is this when they're frustrated and why are they frustrated people are spiritually frustrated and unfulfilled the reason is simple because they are not growing the pace they should grow that's why people the reason why is this you cannot be experiencing growth and not have some level of fulfillment think about it the area of your life where you're unfulfilled and very unhappy is because you're not growing in that area it's because you've not seen some kind of results you want to see so many of you are so happy about your job the reason why i'm so happy about your job is that it looks like what you want to have some of you are so happy about your finance the reason why you're happy is like it looks like what you plan to have some of you are very happy with your marriage the reason why you're happy that it looks like what you want to have but why are you not happy with your business why are you not happy with your investment because it does not look like what you want to have yes or no exactly glory to god i said glory to god when people are spiritually frustrated and they don't have that fulfillment the next thing that happens to them is this they begin to say things like life is overwhelming you hear things like, i'm depressed i'm overwhelmed i'm depressed and this is what they don't know so they begin to get into activities they don't know that it's from the inside it's a lack of spiritual fulfillment that is causing the overwhelmness because the things that are happening right now have always happened what changed something changed on the inside you've always had those career challenges you've always had those marital challenges you've always had some of those delays but now there's capacity on the inside that's shrunk now it's overwhelming you glory to God I said glory to God I said glory to God so how does God grow us because I'm talking about how to experience spiritual power before you experience the power of God can we develop foundations can we develop foundations someone says I want to be this I want to be that I know you want to be a doctor but you have to go to medical school I know you want to be a doctor, but you want to go to medical school. I know you want to express the power of God, but can we build some foundations? How does God really develop us spiritually? Number one, God develops us. Maybe I should flip it a little. Through, uh, through the life experiences. Let's all go to Deuteronomy chapter 8. Oh, wow. God uses, God uses life experiences. <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 2. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord God led thee 40 years in the wilderness. Why did God lead you? Because God will make them go through a shorter journey. He said, they them for 40 years. Why? He says, to humble you, to prove you, to know what is in your heart, that thou wouldest keep his commandment, thou wouldest keep his commandment, and, and he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger, fed thee with manna, which thou knowest not, neither did your father know, that he may make known to thee that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of the Lord. So, did you see something? See, 
some of you don't understand that there's a way god uses your experience to, to increase you to touch you why number one the first thing you experience does is this verse three the bible says when he led them through the he wilderness he what humble them somebody say humble them somebody say humble them god uses your experiences to humble you you know why the humility opens you up in an extraordinary way listen when your life is doing so fine you know and you are this hot girl from university you just came back from cambridge you are so beautiful everybody wants to marry you you don't have time for god because you're like oh at 27 i have this job in this other place i have this international job and all of those things but when you get to 38 and you have no job and there's nobody willing to come in and run and sit down to marry you what will happen you will come down and begin to say god what's happening when god, when life is very on the high pace people don't slow down for god and sometimes god doesn't bring those bad things but god is a master of using those bad experiences to get your attention some of you listen to me god is trying you are going through a bad patch in life some people listen right now are going to a tough patch in life and god is hoping that those tough patches can humble you and you can become more open to God. But each of you to become more open to God, you are resisting, you are fighting God, you are resisting God. Nobody has ever fought God and won before. Ask Jacob. Ask Jacob. I know the things are going so bad. But the question is this. Is this, I know that it's a tough patch. I know you're trying to have a child. I know you're trying to get your papers. I know you're trying to get married. But beyond the physical thing that is happening what is god saying to you hallelujah saul was looking for a donkey it was not because god stole the donkey but god had a bigger plan as saul was looking for the donkey destiny was looking for saul some of you you are looking for a husband but destiny is looking for you some of you you're looking for a child but destiny is looking for you some of you are looking for relocation but destiny is looking for you you thought you lost money but destiny is looking for you as you look for what you're looking for you are going to right walk into destiny somebody say amen. amen destiny is looking for you Hannah saw Eli he said have not been able to get pregnant he told Eli said you will get pregnant by this time next year Hannah said, I will, but this is not normal child. If I got pregnant before, I will not think of having a prophet. But because of this situation, I've become humble. Lord, use me as a vessel to bless other people. Listen to me. Most times, God turns your mess into a message. And God turns the message into a ministry. Hallelujah. Who else is qualified to talk to other singles that have not married for a long time than someone else that got married so late? Who else is qualified to help divorced couples than someone that got divorced? And what you don't know is this. The same way experiences can ruin people, experiences can be the opportunity for grace to permeate your being, for God to step into it. The question is not the experience, it's how do you handle it? Look at yourself and say, how will I handle this? Speak to yourself. Say, how will I handle this? Oh, glory to God. God said in the book of Deuteronomy, he said that I led you and humbled you. The second thing experience does is this. How does God grow us through the experience of life? God uses experience to expose our motive. He's good. See, anybody can love God when things are going well. Yes or no? You, who cannot cry in church? Who cannot lift up his two hands and say, I love me, Lord? A anybody can tight. When, when you're tight, you have an extra 900 million there somewhere. It's easy. Anybody can dance when it's your wedding day and say, Today, today, tomorrow, no more. Today, 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 today. We can dance. Who will not dance on the wedding and say, Great is your faithfulness? And you're taking all this. But it takes people that love God. 
when they see that it's not happening they look on the right they look on the left nothing is happening and they say lord i don't understand why i give you praise Shada. i don't understand why i give you praise i don't know what's going on in my marriage but i give you praise i don't know what's happening with the doctor but i give you praise i don't know what's going on in the hospital i give you praise my son can talk i give you praise david says even though he slays me he said yet will i praise him my praises is not attached to what it does my praises is attached to who he is because i'm a worshiper that's who i am if you believe shout amen, amen. hey and a lady can dance on the wedding day when she's wearing all the piedras white apparel laced with silver and she's walking down the aisle and say dance she can dance but it takes a lot on your 38th birthday, you're a single lady. And no man has said, do you want to marry me? There's no boyfriend anywhere. And on 38th birthday, you get on your knees. You say, Father, I worship you. You get the dance. You say, why are you dancing? Because I love him. It's not about what he does, it's about who he is. I'm not connected for a miracle. I'm connected as a child. And my father is not having to be a performer. He loves me unconditional. If you understand what I'm talking about, say praise the Lord. Hey, experiences reveals motive. You come to church and there are battles everywhere. And you just stay there and you hear the word and pray. And people look at you and think they're perfect. But the battles you are facing on the inside. And they wonder, say, why are you like this? Because experience, experience, mo express motive. Because you've learned that be still and know that I am the Lord. You've, you've learned. There are some things that one will teach you. You need practical, sir. There are in, 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 in school, there are theory subjects like literature, like commerce, like geography. But there are practical subjects like chemistry, like biology. You don't just learn them, you need practical when God wants to grow you hallelujah can I get to you come my sister come quickly when God wants to grow you he calls you first of all and he begins to teach you all this theory he tells you about the Holy Ghost tells you about the power of God but when he gets to a new say come my sister he takes your hand and say let me take you through fire he said let me take you through water he says when I go through the fire I know you're with me though I walk through the valley because you must walk through the valley you must walk through the valley it will be as if your company wants to fail it will be as if your Prayers are not answering, but God is building something. Hey! This is where you separate the boys and the men. Because all of a sudden, the men start, the boys start dropping off. The men says, I know who I believe. <laughs> And the man says, I know who I believe. He says, Satan, you want to throw, throw some more. Abba says in the book of Ephesians, haven't done all to stand. He says, stand. He says, when there's no more prayer, stand. When you don't know what to do, stand. That's why I love this week and next level. We are going to go into extreme praise and worship. Your neighbor will think you're crazy. You've been trying to get a child for 15 years. He said, I will still praise him. You've been trying to get married at 45. I will still praise him. You've been trying to get the papers. I will still praise him. Your child is to sing i will still praise him your cup is at the loss i will still praise him thank you can you give me handkerchief please deuteronomy chapter 8 i love it let's read again ah god said israel spent 40 years in the wilderness but there was a shortcut of 40, 40 days. God says, I didn't take them through the 40 days journey for one reason. I took them to the 40 years journey. Why? He said, but you shall remember all the way which the Lord led you this 40 years in the wilderness. He says to humble you. Christian, you are going through something, but are you not humble? <laughs> he says to humble you. Humble means I subdue my opinion. You know the thing? Many of you are too opinionated for God to speak to you. You know too much to hear the voice of God. God says I will use the experience to humble you. You know, you know too much because you've gone to Harvard. You've gone, just give me a minute please.
Many of you have gone. You've gone to Harvard. You've done. You know, they've taught you so much about marriage. You know so much. So when God says this, I should be your marriage. You said, no, my mother taught me well. I have this experience. When I was this and this and this. But when you go to the wilderness, you become humble. <laughs> and the Bible says, God resisted the proud. And give grace to what? Listen to me. <laughs> the people that God gives grace to are not the educated ones. The people that God gives grace to are not the intelligent ones. The people that God gives grace to are never workers in church. He says, he gives grace to the humble. By the time God is done with you, you will be so humble. You know, many of you think you are so smart. You say, you know, especially these millennials. Oh my God. I love the fact that millennials have a voice and they think differently. But they must understand there's a, there's a divide. There are things, no matter how we think we're humble before God. No matter how we think, there, there are things we don't touch. There are things we don't talk about. There are things that we don't try to confront. Because this is what they are. We humble. We have our opinion, but we humble before God. The smart millennial is thinking how to understand God's word, not how to contradict God's word. Some people say, what does this say so I can fight it? That's a wrong predisposition. What does this say so that I can understand it? So, how does God grow us? He uses experiences. You know, right, right in front of me, or from me here is Mrs. Johnson. And I'm hoping that one of these you share a story. How she got married at the age of 40, 45, 50, what? What, what, when did you get married? 40, yeah? How she got married to the age of 40? And she didn't just marry a set with me, riffraff, that kind of person. And you know what? When she told me how she got married at 40, what I was asking her was this. What were you thinking at 39? Or were you thinking at 38? Or were you thinking at 37, 35, 34? And this, and she said, I, I need to come. I said, my God. It's almost like someone telling me, but still I know that I am the Lord. I said there's theory of faith and there's practical of faith. Many of you are going to practical right now. You know the way practical is? It's going to look messy until it becomes perfect. <laughs> the way practical is, it's going to look messy until it becomes perfect. When you go into an experimental class, if you ever did chemistry, everywhere looks chaotic, 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 chaotic. But when time is up, all of a sudden, everybody has a solution. Everybody has a solution. Everybody has a solution. They say, I've mixed the chemical. Initially, it looks terrible. But right now, it's a perfect solution. Because in the process, it looks, it looks confusing and it has to look confusing so that it can be by faith because if you understand it why will you follow you follow because it makes sense to you but god says you want to know me follow me without knowing where you're going you say i go lord you say i go lord he say i go lord and when you get there you say my god how did we get here he says we got here by faith not by sight because if it was by sight i would not go the road did not make sense the decisions did not make sense the call did not make sense but i only got here because i followed not because of what i saw I I followed because of what I heard. Hey, somebody shout hallelujah. How does us how does us how does God grow us through experience? Experience test your patience. Eh? You think you have patience? What does Hebrew say? It said, follow them with through faith and what? Patience. You want to experience the power of God. You want to express the power of God <laughs> well, through faith because power is developed in those circumstances. Uh. When you want to build weight, you use resistance to build weights. Glory to God. The next thing experience does is this experience builds faith. The faith that has not been tested cannot be trusted. Let me speak to those that heard me. They were over here. The faith that has not been tested cannot be trusted. Anybody can claim they have faith when there's no trial. The people that have faith don't say, I have faith. They show you what their faith has done. But the reason why they can show you what their faith has done is because their faith has gone through what? Testing. <laughs> this new generation 
If God does not do it in one month of prayer, I'm done. If God does not do it in one week of fasting, I'm done. You know, listen to me. You may have microwave, but your God is not a microwave God. Praise God. You may have microwave, but your God is not a microwave God. God is a God of process. He does not only have the destiny, he builds you for the destiny. He builds you for the destiny. It's time to allow God begin to build you. It's time to allow God begin to build you. How does he build you? He allows you to go into situations that are tough. Joseph was going to the palace, but Joseph had a problem. He talked too much. God says, Let's help you. <laughs> he says, God was teaching him. You know, God will teach him the theory. Um, can you help me? The microphone is, you know. God will teach him the theory. Joseph, no, 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 lady, let, let me get a guy. Pastor, you're coming. Okay, any of you can come. But Pastor, you can come. Yeah. So God was trying to teach Joseph theory. He said, Joseph, you talk too much. Can you remove your mask? You know, Joseph, you talk too much. You know, learn to be quiet. Just say, yeah, 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 I got it. Yeah, 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 yeah I got it. I, I say, yeah, yeah, he will explain again. He would talk again. And God says, you're still talking. He says, hey, yeah, 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 that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm reducing the talking. God says, you're still talking. God says, don't worry. Don't let's talk again. Let's go. <laughs> when he got to Potiphar's house, he learned the first lesson. He was there as a slave. His right to talk was taken. Because as a slave, one of the things you lose is your right to express your opinion. But he didn't learn. He was still talking to Potiphar's wife. And he was getting him in trouble. God says, you will learn. This thing will kill you finally. He took him to prison. He was not just a prisoner. He was a slave prisoner. Have you, can you imagine the combination? He was a slave that was what? A prisoner. The total loss of speech. When God was done with him, God says... I didn't say your talking was wrong. I only say your talking needs to be fixed because you are still going to have to talk your way out of this place. Go and meet Buckler. Go and meet the, the cook and talk to them. And as he spoke to them, it was that same talking that took him out. But God had to refine it. You know what God does to you? God takes you through a process of, God allows you to go through a process of refining, 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 refining. You know, some of you come to church. You know why you need to find a community in church? You need to find a place. Walk, ushers, greatest a cell why you need to do that is that god is going to put you in church with hypocrites and true christians hallelujah they will borrow your money and not return it but god is teaching you something that don't trust in men god is trying to build capacity into you they will talk back about you some of you you say why did they talking bad about me god says for your future i'm developing capacity you must learn to do without criticism and praise but many of you are saying i don't want to serve i don't want to be no people in church i don't want to. you don't know you're running away from training and until you are trained you cannot reign until you are trained, you cannot reign. Hey, lift up your hands, everybody. Lord, help me go through what I need to go through to be all I need to be. Thank you, Pastor. Lord, help me go through all I need to go through to be all I need to be. And amen. Amen. Glory to God. I said glory to God. That hallelujah needs to be. I said glory to God. Uh, let's say glory to God. Hey, some relationships are not meant for marriage. They are meant for training. Don't worry, you will get it when you get home. You know, <laughs> you didn't get that. You didn't get that. Some relationships are not meant for marriage. They are meant for training. You know what God does? That he saves the best for the last. So before you mess up the last, he says, let them go through training. So you wonder why you went to that relationship. I thought God led me there. God led you there, but not led you to marry. He led you to be trained. Hallelujah. He led you to be trained. So that by the time you are done and the guy shows up, the guy says, why do you talk like this? Why? You are so kind. Is it your parents? Is it... But you're not like your parents said, oh my God, I was cooked in the backside of the desert. When nobody was seeing me, my maker, my destiny maker was busy cooking me, was busy preparing me. He was preparing me. No wonder he said, he said, thou prepares a table before me. But before he prepared the table, he had to take me through the valley of the shadow of death to prepare me for the prepared table. Somebody say, Amen. amen. Someone says, I lost the business money. You didn't lose it. You bought wisdom. 
God was teaching you how not to depend on people. He says, let's teach you some things. Let's teach you some things. And you lost it. And you still keep talking about it. God says you have the wrong perspective. It's not a loss. It's a lesson. Praise God. It's not a failure. It's a lesson. And you get it and go forward now. See, stop running away from what God wants you to train you. So I say, every Sunday morning I'm tired. You don't know where you will end up. Get used to it. <laughs> Someone says, next level prayer is too early. You don't know where you will end up. Get used to it. All those things are God's training. Some of you just sit at home. You don't go to church. You just watch online. You don't get to serve. You don't have to put up yourself and say, I need to find a place to serve. I'm going to military camp because there's something in me that needs to come out. Praise the Lord. God is training you. Do you know God is training you? Why do we pray every morning one hour? Just for one reason. We pray so that we don't have to pray. Because everybody will eventually pray. But we pray our own. It's called prayer advance. Before prayer becomes danger. You know, when they say it's an emergency, we go ahead of time in next level and begin to pray so that we don't need to pray. Someone says, why do we serve? He says, it's so difficult to serve. It's so difficult because of people. I don't want to offend people. God says, how will I train you? Don't you know training is messy? It's messy. It's messy. So he puts you around people. They hurt you. God says you have to consider because when you want to become a governor, not everybody will be a good person. When I want to make you the MD of the consulting firm. Not everybody will be nice. So I put you among sharks. I put you in places so that they can deal with you. And when they deal with you, you lose excess fat. And you become the furnished man of God for his glory and for his praise. Somebody say hallelujah. But this is what God is saying. It's time. It's time to what? Stop resisting God's training. It's time to stop resisting God's training. What do you do when God trains you? Take yourself and put yourself in. God is training you financially. You take. How did God train me financially? God began to teach me about how to give my, my whole salary. And I said, you want to kill me? He says, I don't want to kill you. I'm trying to teach you not to depend on your salary. Begin to depend on me. And right now, I don't depend on any salary. I depend on God. But when he told me to start, I died one million times. But I'm glad. In fact, when people tell me they live on their salary, I wonder how you do it. I wonder how you do it. I wonder, really? How do, how do you live on your salary? How? But because God taught me, it was tough. Every month give out, every month give out, every month give out, every month give out, every month give out. So, 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 so. Until the point came. I, the way I could help myself and say that, you know what? It's putting my mind in this salary that's causing me the problem. Let me go I don't have salary again. Let me start looking for other ways. And God opened it up for me. Praise God. Let's pray. Stand on your feet, everyone.